right, today's uh, December 15th. It's time for another small aquaponics system update. Uh, I'll give you a heads up on uh, what I've been doing and how everything's going. All right, it's, uh, it's pretty cold here today. It's definitely a cold, breezy winter day. As you can see, I've thrown mulch around everything in the yard, but uh, I think last night it was down in the 20s, low 20s. Tonight it's supposed to be down in the teens. Uh, in the greenhouse, it's obviously uh, pretty warm in here. I do have this small little space heater I put in here. Uh, something's wrong with the actual temperature switch on there. Most of them usually, you turn it all the way down, it'll keep something at like 60 degrees or so. Uh, that one, when I put it all the way down, it doesn't turn on until it gets like 50, 40 degrees, somewhere in there. Uh, actually, where I have it right now, it's not quite all the way turned down. And it usually keeps it about 50 in here at night. And that's only turning on occasionally because that small heater is more than enough for this space. Um, so here's what's been going on. Uh, as you can see, uh, my uh, deep water culture pipes. I planted some lettuce in the top row. Uh, in order to make room for them, I took away those strawberry plants that were up top. They're now on the bottom. They're actually flowering, it looks like. So they seem to be happy in their new home. Uh, and I took the goji berries that I had in the system and moved them over here to my wicking bed. Uh, the biggest goji berry plant, which is this one, uh, remember that was just a twig not too long ago? It actually had like a foot and a half long roots on it already, it was amazing. Uh, and then my son got happy with his little scissors and cut off half the roots before I planted it, but it seems to have not gotten chopped at all. And it's actually kind of thriving here. It gets pretty good sun on the end of the bed here. Uh, south is that way. So, uh, and this is the other goji berry plant. And the other one, that's the smallest one. That one's actually a really, really tiny twig when I first put it in there to clone it up in the deep water uh, pipe. And I've transplanted some strawberries here. Those are more from the yard though. And then I've got some kale and stuff that we've washed. These most of these leaves are either broken from me walking by the ones that are missing are the ones that my wife has cut off and we've been eating. Uh, the bell peppers seem to be doing great. As you can see, it's pretty well loaded there. Uh, there's even some like grouping over inside of the fish tank here. Quite a few in here. Uh, the branches are all growing up. The branches are actually getting kind of heavy duty and thick now that the bush is getting older. I've just got bell peppers everywhere in here. They're kind of hard to see actually until you start pulling these back and then you'll see like all of a sudden, oh, there's four bell peppers there. Pretty well camouflaged. Uh, lemon tree seems to be doing fine in here, which I knew that was gonna happen. Uh, this fan, I've actually took that big fan out of here and put this little fan in, because it can sit on the floor, it tilts, it can tilt straight up. And the reason why I did that actually is as soon as the uh, sun comes up, this upper air up here will be warm enough to open that vent. So as soon as it hits 70 degrees, that vent starts opening. But uh, the air down here in the bottom of the uh, system is gonna be having all the cool water, or cool air shedding off the aquaponics tanks, which keeps the bottom of the greenhouse kind of cool. So I have that fan pushing the cold air up here, and it actually makes all the air in the greenhouse a nice even temperature. And it helps the fish tanks to absorb more heat because they're like a thermal battery. Um, the tomato plant, the one I had started right here that was growing, it has now reached the far side of my greenhouse. I've been pruning off all the flowers. It's been making tons of flowers uh, in hopes that it will make as many tomatoes as ripe as possible because I want to take this thing out of here. It is taking over my system and choking out everything. But you can see I got like long strings of tomatoes like everywhere in here. They're kind of hidden until you start digging around. But they're all throughout this bed. And I've, I've been getting some tomatoes off of it. There's a little guy right there. It's the last one of that little batch, but they taste really good. And uh, here's that little goji berry cutting. The kale plants and everything were getting pushed down by the tomato plant, but I worked them out to where they can stand up now. I have strawberry plants that are buried in there. It's really aggravating that this tomato plant grew this big, but it seems to live in here. My strawberries have started pumping out strawberries. They're ever bearing type. They're not June bearing type. So I've been getting some like really nice strawberries off of here. 
Most of them are about probably about the size of this one, and some are as big as twice as big as that. But they're all hanging off the edge, and it's still pumping out flowers. You can see those. There's a whole understory over here for this kale. Um, those are all the younger plants that are on that far end of the bed. Uh, as you can see, the other clones that I was doing of the black mulberries that I said were still alive and are going to start making leaves again, they're starting to do that. There's some more back here behind these kale plants, but you just can't see them. And let's see here. Everything's been doing pretty good, uh, except for this jalapeno plant. It's still trying to put up more peppers, but it's like my canary in the coal mine. That's the main reason I'm liking this jalapeno plant. It's telling me like when something's going on. So as you can see, it's starting to get nutrient deficient again. And I assume because the base of the tomato plant is right next to it, it's probably choking this guy out. But uh, everything seems to be going well for the most part. So as soon as I get the tomato plant out of here, well, I tried to rip it out already. My wife wants me to keep it. So that's the whole reason why I got this system to keep her happy. And it's fun. Um, so hopefully here in about another month, we'll get all the tomatoes off of it. I'm going to keep pulling all these these blossoms off to keep it from making more. Show you some right now. Like I've had a foot by foot or foot wide by foot tall uh, piles of flowers already in here. Sometimes when I come in here and start pruning all these guys off, just flower clusters like crazy. But uh, you can see there's still tons more flowers through there, and they're all they're all self fertile. I actually haven't been shaking the bush or anything like that. Like what most people do. I do have that fan down there moving some air around in here, but uh, for the most part. You can see some of the tomatoes are tiny on this, but most of them have been pollinated pretty well, self-pollinated. Of course, the weather in here is not hot and not, and even though it is humid, it gets less humid in certain parts of the day. So the uh, flowers themselves don't become sterile like they would in extremely hot and extremely continuously humid environments. But uh, that's it for the tomatoes. I'm gonna quit talking about them now. Um, my system has been using way less water than what it did when it was warmer outside. Uh, my bell siphons have been working great so far. You see that one's draining over there right now. This one better here is starting to fill up. Should start draining here in a second. Uh, you can see, as you can see, my uh, duckweed has died back considerably. Uh, and that, I guess, is they're pretty much not getting any sunlight now, so I assume it's because of that but it'll explode again. And you can see like the water level as it slowly sinks, it's sticking to the sides and, and dying that way too. Slow death on the sides. And I assume the fish that I've never fed in this bottom tank are also eating it. And the dragonfly larvae, and the gamma shrimp, and the daphnia, which is like a water flea. It's a little tiny bug that reproduces like crazy that I've got in here. I've got a whole ecosystem going. Um. I was having issues with this bed draining, and I couldn't figure out why. On earth, the, the, the uh, thing quits working all of a sudden, the uh, bell siphon. Uh, so I was over here messing with it, like on that the main tube, you can actually take the cap and move it up and down about an inch, and it'll still have a good seal on it. So I was adjusting the you know the head height on the pipe and messing with the water flow. And I could never figure out what was going on that caused this one to stop working. Uh, and then all of a sudden, one day, I look, actually looked down in there, and that's the actual main standpipe that was coming up. It was slightly crooked. And I guess when, when I was putting these pipes in, I adjusted this bed to get those pipes to be level. Because this bed's pretty, pretty loose the way I built it. I can actually move it around. And I shifted the whole barrel. And this actual pipe down here, it sits on that ever so slightly, so it caused that, that pipe that was normally straight up and down to just ever so slightly tilt. And that was keeping it from making its, uh, you know, toilet flush or whatever you want to call it. So uh, I just basically just grabbed it and stood it back up straight, and now it works fine. I actually was able to drop the water flow on it, the whole system on these two beds, cleaned quite considerably, and bumped the water flow up in here. We still have those other flood and drain beds working well. So these, bit, these fish have got some more fresh water coming in. You see, as you can see, the water flow is pretty decent. There's only three fish in that one barrel, though. Uh, my solar system's been working great. Uh, 
it's the only thing I've got sucking power out of it right now is this little air bubble thing. It's like five watts. So that doesn't even affect it at all. I did have that and a 15 watt water pump running off of it, which I do plan on using again. I'm probably gonna set up a bunch of these pipes on the outside of the greenhouse every summer and then use that 15 watt pump to run it. Uh, also, uh, my, my 25 watt AC powered water pump that I have going in there in the bottom of my uh, sump tank, it actually started to fail. I noticed that probably midway through last month in November uh, that my beds weren't quite working as well. And then I noticed that the water that was actually coming out of here had dropped just a little bit. And so I started messing with that pump. I started cleaning it at first and then, and then when I turned, tried to turn it back on, it actually made some grinding noises before it started up. So I was like, oh, it's time to throw in my backup pump. So that pump lasted about a year, almost exactly. Oh, and uh, when I was transplanting my goji berries out of these uh, these net pipes, or net cups, whatever you're gonna call them, uh, the, uh, the roots were like crazy already, I told you that, and uh, it was hard to get them out of here without breaking them. So what I'd suggest you do if you're gonna clone things in these, which I'll do from now on, is I'm just gonna take a pair of scissors and cut all the way around the base and I'll just have the, the plastic rim here with this in it and it'll still snap in there securely. And then whenever it's time to take the clone out, I'll just pop this little black piece out. Let me show you. Pop it out and then it's got the slit so I'll just open it and then take the plant out really easy. It's obviously the one, one of the ones I used already. Uh, so that'll make, make life a little bit easier. Uh, and then for the lattice cups over there, uh, the way I got them out of the water that far, because remember the water is a little deep on those pipes, I didn't quite cut the holes just right, it's my first ones ever. Uh, what I did is uh, I put, I just put pea gravel in and then, uh, and then set that little uh, peat moss thing right on top of it so they're out of the water ways. Actually, let's check out and see what the roots look like on them. All right, so here's, uh, I put these guys in here when they're just little baby seedlings. Uh, and they're already starting to get some roots on them pretty well. You can see the uh, pea gravel I have in the bottom there. And then uh, the roots are looking pretty healthy. Uh, so I'm going to put this guy back in the hole and uh, let him continue to grow. We'll check in on them next month. Alright, so the uh, water temperature right now in my aquaponics system. Remember last night was like around 20 degrees or so Fahrenheit outside. And now my water in my aquaponics system is probably about 57 degrees. I don't know if you can see that. So that's not bad. It's still well within like 55 to 75 is best for lettuce growth. And let's see how my active my uh, goldfish are. I'm going to throw a feeding cycle in here. Them some food pellets. Yeah, it looks like the goldfish are still pretty active. Look at those big bellies on those guys. They like to eat. Also, uh, if you like green onions, and you buy them by the bunch from the store. We took uh, one green onion. I already heard somewhere else you could do this, so I tried it out in the aquaponic system. I heard you could do it in your regular garden. Is I took the uh, the very little tip of the green onion we didn't eat, stuck in the aquaponic system, and let it grow. Uh, you may have noticed this in last month's video, but it's already like splitting, making new plants, so you can actually get green onions for life for free if you just grow the ones you get for the free at the store. So. Uh, it's not bad. It was good for the potatoes, whatever else you're going to use them for. And soups. It is the time of year for soups too, so looks like onions grow well in the aquaponic system, but that's not surprising con considering how well the garlic chives and chives did in here, which are also a type of onion.